That's what I'm talking about. So Spider-Man No Way Home tells the story of Peter Parker trying to deal with his outed identity while tons of villains from multiple universes crash down on him at once. What's up everybody? Well we finally got Spider-Man No Way Home. This is probably the movie that's had the most chatter, the most hype, the most anticipation for a lot of us in 2021. It's the movie that a lot of people have had at the top of their list of most anticipated movies and it's been the movie that uh, Quite honestly, as excited as I've been for it, I've been so tired of hearing about, but we'll get into all of that. First and foremost, completely spoiler-free review. This actually might be a pretty short review compared to most of my right out of the theater first experience reviews, because there's not a whole lot in this movie I can talk specifically about without altering your movie experience, and I do not want to do that whatsoever. So I'm just going to get into the things that have already been revealed and talking as vaguely as I possibly can while being able to make a complete point. I do plan on making a spoiler-filled review tomorrow as well as a ranking of the Spider-Man movies, so you'll get a lot more spoiler-filled talk in that next video, so save all the spoiler comments, all the questions, all of the shit that I know you guys want to talk about right now that have seen the movie for the video tomorrow. This is for everybody that has not seen the movie yet or just wants to talk about it in a vague sense. So if you guys have been following me for the past two weeks, I have reviewed all five Spider-Man films that I have not talked about yet on this channel, the three Raimi films and the two Mark Webb films. And of course I reviewed Homecoming and Far From Home right out of the theater when they were released. So I've talked about every single Spider-Man movie as far as the live action ones. And to give a quick context of who I am as a Spider-Man fan, Spider-Man's always been one of my favorite Marvel superheroes, always been one of my favorite superheroes in general. And I grew up and still have a lot of nostalgic love for the Sam Raimi trilogy. That is my preferred Spider-Man. Those are the movies that I love and I cherish the most. But I've enjoyed every single Spider-Man movie that's been released. Even my least favorites, I can still throw on and have a pretty good time with. So I'm a pretty big Spider-Man fan. As far as what they've done in the MCU, I've enjoyed Homecoming and Far From Home, and I've certainly enjoyed Spider-Man being in the Avengers movies and Captain America Civil War. But he hasn't quite been the Spider-Man that I want to see thus far. It seems like he's always been Spider-Boy to a certain degree to where there's always some adult hero that's propping him up like Tony Stark, like it seemed that Doctor Strange was going to be in this movie. He always felt like a secondary character when I feel like Spider-Man has enough behind him and enough in his strength and his lore and his, his appeal that he could easily stand on his own. He doesn't need to be propped up by any of the Avengers. And that's been my main frustration with the Spider-Man movies thus far is that they just don't really feel like traditional Spider-Man movies. So with Spider-Man No Way Home being advertised, obviously there's been a lot of hype, a lot of speculation, a lot of whispers and rumors regarding who might show up in this movie. Is it going to combine all three universes completely with different Spider-Men? Are we gonna get Marvel Daredevil characters? Are we gonna get Jessica Jones? Is X-Men gonna show up in here? I mean, I've seen every single rumor online, little snippets confirming it, like Hugh Jackman's in New York. See, confirmed! Wolverine's in No Way Home. It's been nuts for the past couple of years years how insane fans have been just speculating on how much is going to be in this movie and really at the end of the day all that I wanted was a good story I don't care if only two characters show up from the other universes or 25 show up as long as they tell a good coherent story a good spider-man story and they utilize the characters however many that come in well that was my main goal and the main thing that I was hoping for in this movie so starting off with the positives for spider-man no way home Right what I just said about utilizing whatever characters they bring back in a very good way, in a, very, in a way that actually merits the narrative and the storytelling that they're going for here, I think they did a fantastic job. The trailers have already shown us a lot of the villains coming back regarding Electro and Dr. Octopus and Green Goblin and Sandman and Lizard and it was like, oh my god, you guys are doing it again. Like, you literally shit the bed in Spider-Man 3, despite the fact that I love that movie. It was trying to do way too much. You shit the bed again in Amazing Spider-Man 2, trying to do way too much. And now here you are again on the third chapter trying to shove 18 movies worth of characters into one film. What are you thinking? And that was the biggest concern that I had was, is it going to feel overstuffed? I mean, are we even going to be able to focus on any of these characters because there's so much going on? And they find a really good way 
to utilize every single character that they bring back in a way that feels not only satisfying as a follow-up to where they were left off in their movies, but also in a way to where there's not this need for all this backstory and this establishing of the character or you know any kind of a, an origin story or a subplot regarding all of them to where you can put them in this movie, we're already caught up, we already know the context of where their character is in the universe, how they think, what their motivation is, we know their personalities for the most part, and so they're able to just be characters in this plot and they feel like they're all really well utilized and none of them feel like they're shortchanged for another. They don't feel like they're battling for screen time or they're battling for story or they're pulling away attention at the wrong moment because they got to focus on this guy. They used every single piece of character arcs, character motivations and following up from multiple universes in a damn good way for the story of this movie. And primarily, I think that Alfred Molina as Doc Ock and Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin were fan-fucking-tastic. I mean, for me being a Raimi fanatic, for me that being my Spider-Man, that's my era of these movies, of those villains, them coming back, I was already gonna be on cloud nine and I was already gonna have all my attention drawn to them, as much as I like seeing some of the other villains come back as well. And those two really stood out in their performances and with what they did to kind of evolve their character from where we last left them. And everything that they did regarding Doc Ock and especially Green Goblin, I just thought was some of the best utilizations of those two characters, maybe even rivaling how they were utilized in their original films. And they were just a great follow-up from where we left them and a way to utilize them in this universe that didn't just feel like a cameo or didn't really feel like this novelty or this flashy thing on screen. Hey, look, it's that guy from 2002. And by bringing back Green Goblin specifically, I feel like they finally at least filled most of the void that I've always felt they had with the character of Green Goblin in the Spider-Man movies and that this guy is the Joker of the Spider-Man universe. This is the main arch enemy of Spider-Man. This is the guy that should have the biggest effect on Peter Parker's life in the most negative, tragic way. This is the guy that should bring the most insanity, the most chaos to the world of Spider-Man. And neither of the versions of the Green Goblin that we've gotten thus far, either in 2002 or in Amazing Spider-Man 2, have really filled that. Bringing back Willem Dafoe and giving him another chance to bring this character to life really does feel, paired with 2002, like the best representation, the fullest representation of Green Goblin that we have ever gotten and probably ever will get. And this is by far the best that Tom Holland has ever been as Spider-Man as well. There's a lot more to chew on as far as story, as far as character arcs there with his character of Peter Parker in this movie. There's a lot more that he's dealing with. All of his character interactions, whether it be with Aunt May, whether it be with MJ, whether it be with all of these new villains that he's never met before, I think that he gives the best performance and he's the most enjoyable to watch in the role of Spider-Man than he has been in any of the, what, five or six movies that he's been in this character already. This is the top that we have seen this guy give in this universe thus far. And the movie does a great job at continuously building on itself, continuously raising the stakes, continuously making it more exciting than what we've already seen before. There doesn't feel like there's this grand sequence somewhere in the movie that peaks and then everything else from there just never quite measures up. And that's a problem that we run into a lot with superhero movies where they have this one awesome sequence and everything else just doesn't quite measure up to that. This is the type of movie that starts off with a conflict that we already know is happening with Spider-Man being outed to the world, slowly builds onto that with the conflict with Doctor Strange, slowly builds onto that with all these arriving villains, and that's pretty much all we've seen in the trailer. So everything beyond that that we don't know about that hasn't really been advertised or really even been hinted at in the advertisement continues to build on even how awesome and epic those story elements are. And this is one of those types of movies that you want to go out, you want to watch on the biggest screen with the biggest crowd. You know, I understand health concerns nowadays, but if you're okay with it, going to the theaters with as many people as you can get into a screening, of which the theater that I went to was the busiest that I've seen that theater in over a year and a half because this is one of those movies that the crowd reaction to certain scenes, to certain reveals and twists and everything under the sun makes the movie experience so much better. Very similar to the experience that I had with Avengers Endgame, where these huge fan service moments just get this uproar in the crowd. And that's what I'll always remember that movie for. That's what I'll always hold dear in my heart 
is that experience seeing this for the first time with 100 plus people. This is the type of movie to have that type of experience with and hopefully you have that type of crowd with because this is absolutely a movie with so many crowd pleasing huge fan service moments that it's an experience you want to have the greatest time possible with because you will always remember your screening of Spider-Man No Way Home if you're lucky enough to have that type of crowd. And finally, without describing at all what happens, the way that this movie leaves off, if I'm reading the signs correctly and I'm seeing the writing on the wall in the way that I hope that I am, what they are setting up for the future of Spider-Man films I am so excited and happy about. It's always a special moment when you really enjoy your experience with a movie and they leave you off at a point that's such a high note, that's such a, a hopeful note for the future that you literally cannot wait for what comes next. And I have not felt that way about Spider-Man since a Raimi film. Moving on to the mixed aspects, I think that some of the returning characters feel exactly like the characters that they were in their movies. And I think that those are the ones that stand out the most to me as the most fun to watch and as the, the best realized storylines and the best realized performances of those characters. At the same time, there's other characters that return in this movie that to me felt a bit foreign to the version of those characters that we know and love. It felt a little bit like they had to take certain characters and kind of push them through the sieve that is the MCU formula, the MCU humor, the MCU dialogue. And while I still enjoyed every single person that came into this movie, there was some of them that just didn't quite feel right to me. Also going along with that, something that I feel like I have to say in just about every MCU movie, and I hope one day I don't have to say that, is the humor. Now there is a lot of humor that lands very well in this movie. There's a lot of big laughs, there's a lot of great moments where the theater erupted in laughter. They did a really good job with that side of humor. What's your name again? Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> 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 Wait, no, seriously, what's your actual name? But unfortunately, the MCU always tries to put way too much humor into their movie, and so it feels like they're throwing everything at the wall, and while they have a lot of great jokes, they have a lot of ones that fall flat, and they have a lot of running jokes, or jokes that are sticking for a good 30 seconds, waiting for multiple laughs that just don't really feel like they're landing for me, and almost to the point where it feels like certain characters shouldn't be quipping in these moments, certain characters shouldn't be making light of the situation that's going on, and that's just a problem the MCU has always had for me personally. That's just something that they, they is part of their formula. They love to have laughs, they love to keep everything light, and I just feel like sometimes they need to learn to not do that quite as much. I know a couple of magic words myself, starting with the word please. Please, Scooby-Doo this crap. Now moving on to the negatives. I don't really care for the explanation of how we open up the multiverse here. And it's in all the trailers. It's something that I haven't really been on board with at all in the marketing regarding Peter Parker going to Doctor Strange because he wants to cast this spell and make everybody forget about his disclosed identity. He wants everybody to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and he won't shut his mouth and so they have this whole snafu to where Doctor Strange is doing the spell and he's getting annoyed and he screws up the spell. And that's what opens up the multiverse and causes all these villains to converge on Tom Holland's Spider-Man. This always felt like that was a really lazy, silly, MCU humor styled way to get all this together. It just feels like there's so much more compelling, so much more tension filled or, or at least plot lines that maybe take themselves a little bit more seriously than that. I mean, I like Doctor Strange in this movie. I liked him more than I thought I was going to and he doesn't feel like he's this person that's propping up Peter Parker the way that the past two movies have felt with Tony Stark and uh, Mysterio. But just that entire explanation, that entire plot line of this spell that went wrong, it just. I understand it's from the comics. I understand that it's probably comic book accurate and that's important to a lot of you. It just feels like there should have been a million other ways that you could have gone about this. Almost to the point where it feels like they didn't really worry too much about how we get there because they knew once we got there, once we started seeing Green Goblin and Doc Ock and everybody else come into this movie, that nobody's really gonna care. They're like, oh, whatever, I don't give a shit how we got there. This shit's awesome, keep going. And that's very true, <laughs> you know, that's very true that once you get to that point of the movie, you're not exactly looking back with scorn and still annoyed about how you got there, but come on, 
there could have been a better way to do that. Finally, I felt like there was some missed opportunities in this movie regarding character moments, uh, regarding character interactions that we have really been longing to see in some of these villains. And, you know, it felt like there was moments that they should have lingered on a little bit longer. There was moments that story-wise, narrative-wise, character arc-wise, they should have stopped, paused, and let us kind of marinate in what's going on a little bit longer. But so much is going on in this movie, especially in the third act, that there's these huge moments that should have been big, gigantic moments that just felt like they happened, and then we got to move on to something else because there's so much going on. And it just... It felt like it was a bit of a disservice to some of the characters, to some of the continued storylines that are brought up in this movie that we kind of had to fast forward past some of that stuff. But all in all, guys, I really enjoyed Spider-Man No Way Home. It's not perfect. It's not my favorite Spider-Man movie, but it is absolutely my favorite Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. And I'm somebody that, you know, I've, I've had a rocky road with the Spider-Man movies, so take that with a grain of salt. If you've loved the previous two, maybe you won't love this one as much as those two, but I think they did a great job at balancing action spectacle with Spider-Man, classic elements, with nostalgia, with fan service, and they balanced all of that really well for a movie that I genuinely think is one of the biggest event films that we've had since the last Avengers movie. So this Spider-Man fan is very happy with what I got and very happy with where we are hopefully heading with this character. So grab your family and friends, go out to the largest screen and find the biggest crowd that you can to see this movie with and kick back and have an awesome time with Spider-Man No Way Home. And when it finally comes out to video, Go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Spider-Man No Way Home? Please keep it spoiler free until tomorrow, but give me your vague ideas of what you think about this movie. Is this your favorite Tom Holland Spider-Man movie? Is this your favorite Spider-Man movie, period? Or did you not really like it? What was your biggest issues, if you can tell me without giving specifics? Let me know down below, guys, and we will talk about it. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're a Spider-Man fan, because we still got a couple of rankings to go. I might even rank the villains. I might be in Spider-Man mode for the next week or so. We got to see how things go. But we got more content coming, so please do not miss any of that. Thank you guys for watching, as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.